There's a holdup in the Bronx, Brooklyn's broken out in fights. There's a traffic jam in Harlem that's backed up to Jackson Heights. There's a scout troop short a child, cruise ships do an idle wild. Car 54, where are you? Tonight's program brought to you by Ice Blue Secret Deodorant helps keep you cool, calm, dry. And by new push button lilt, the only home permanent that waves your hair with foam. This is the changing face of New York City. It was just a year ago that these tenements in the East Bronx were demolished. Today, in their place, is rising one of the country's largest modern low-cost housing developments, Bronx View Village. There's a lady up there. Where? Right there. Hey, look, there's a dame up there. What's she doing up there? How do I know what she's doing up there? Hey, is she going to jump? Well, what are you going to do? Stand around and wait to find out? Call the cops. Call the cops. Call the cops. This is an emergency. Get me the building commissioner right away. Well, what are you doing? Standing around? Do something. What'll I do? Shh, don't do anything. You might frighten her. <laughs> Quiet, you might frighten her. <laughs> Hello, commissioner. Yeah, this is Gunderson, out at the Bronx View Project. Sir, we've got a woman on the scaffolding on the 14th floor. Oh, no. Another delay? And it looks like she's gonna jump. <laughs> well, do something. Wait a minute, here come the police. Good, she hasn't jumped yet. I've gotta get two of my men up there. Hang on, Commissioner. Kadowski! Yes, Chief? Get him up to the 14th floor. Oh, when I ring. We'll have to ride him up to the roof and then lower him to the 14th. All right, boys, you know what to do. Standard procedure. Do you want him to talk to her and me grab her from behind, or do you want me to talk to her and him grab her from behind? What's the difference? Oh, oh, wait, I got a better idea. You talk to her from down here, and we'll both grab her. Figure it out on the way up, only get up there. Take him up. Wait, I got a better idea. We'll both talk to her, and you kind of sneak up and grab her. Take him away! Gunther. Francis. You better talk to her, and I'll grab. I get too interested in what they're saying, and I forget what we're there for. Take him away! Clear the area in front. Somebody call the fire department and tell them to bring their jumping nets. How did she get up there? I don't know. It must have been during the night. Well, get the night watchman. Hey, get the night watchman! Wait a minute, I got the building commissioner on the line. I'll take that. Now look, Commissioner, Captain Block, 53rd Precinct. Now, don't worry, I'm in full charge. Yes, sir. I'm on top of it, sir. <laughs> I think I see her. She's still up there. Oh, pretty chick, friend of fire. In in Stevie's hands. In the rebel land, claim a kindler. Dame Olive Bay. In the Rebelland, claim a kindle of the low yanko. Yellow Malibu. In the Rebelland, claim a kindle of the Malibu. Hello. Come in, come in. My first visitors. Nice of you to drop in. I'm Mrs. Bronson, 14B. 14B? Oh, I didn't get a chance to put my name downstairs in the bell yet. So what are you standing in the foyer? Come into the apartment. Come. Come into the apartment. Oh, you'll have to excuse the mess. I just moved in. I haven't even got all my furniture yet. You moved in? So, how do you like my new apartment? It's very airy. Did you ever see such cross ventilation? And would you believe it? Last night, I slept under a blanket. Gee whiz. And in my house last night, it was so hot, my wife and I took turns sleeping in a bathtub. <laughs> Gunther. Sit, yes, sit down. I'll make some nice hot tea. Best thing on a day like this. Uh, look, Mrs. Bronson, this is ridiculous. You can't live in the skeleton of a building. Mrs. Bronson, you, you can't live in a building that isn't even up yet. Sit down already. It's like being followed by a telephone pole. <laughs> Look, Mrs. Bronson, you can't stay here. Stay here? 
For two years I've been waiting to move in and now you can't stay here. In my own apartment, I can't stay. Your own apartment? I've got a lease. A lease? With three references. Two from doctors. You have a lease? What does it say? Occupancy, August 1st. And what does the sign downstairs say? Occupancy, August 1st. And what's today? August 1st. So you want with lemon or with that? <laughs> I'll have lemon. Try the honey cake. Thank you. Got the... Look, Mrs. Bronson, you'll have to come down with this. The apartment isn't finished. For me, it's plenty. Fancy I never was. Did you sleep under a blanket last night? No. So, you want with lemon or without? Uh, Mrs. Bronson, for your own safety, you have to get out. You have to get out. In the old tenement, when they tore it down, for six months they kept nagging with papers, with eviction notices. You have to get out. A new apartment, they promised me. Now I'm in the new apartment again. It's get out, get out. But you'll have to. Never. I'm back in the Bronx. For two years I lived in Brooklyn with my daughter. Oh, she's a lovely girl. But who can live with her? But now it's August 1, and like General MacArthur, he should live and be well. I have returned. Welcome home, Mrs. Bronson. So. I'll have it with lemon. You mean you haven't brought her down yet? Well, haven't you done anything? Don't worry, Commissioner, I'm on top of it. We found out how she and her furniture got moved up there. The night watchman helped her. How was I supposed to know the building wasn't finished? I never saw it in the daytime. <laughs> nighttime, it looked finished. Commissioner, I think, stop thinking. I'll handle this from now on. Get me Bixby. I'm putting my troubleshooter on it. He'll have her out immediately. It's not going to be that easy, sir. One of my men sent a note down. They say she has a lease. A lease? Well, that's ridiculous. What's her name? Bronson? Mrs. Bronson? She'll be out in an hour. Hi, Chief. What's up? A little troubleshooting. That's my middle name, Chief. Some kooky dame is perched up on the 14th floor of the Bronxview job. Get her down. <laughs> sure thing. Consider her down. Mrs. Bronson? Yes, you know her? She's a troublemaker. It took me six months to move her out of the old building to make way for the project. I tried everything. Evictions, violations, everything. Well, how did you finally get her out? I gave her a lease. You gave her a lease? Don't worry, leave it to me. I'll get her out. She won't get around me this time. I'll get her out. Renta fire. Now you try it. Off improper job. No, no. Uh, wait, wait a minute, Rachel. I think I got it. <laughs> Auf ein Prepperchick, brennt ein Feierl, in ein Stiebes Eis. In der Rebbe lehrt ein kleiner Kinderlach, der im Olive Base. Hey, Francis, that was good. Good? For a Muldoon, it's fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> Auf ein Prepperchick, brennt ein Feierl, in ein Stiebes Eis. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Look who's here. It's Arnold. Look, everybody, it's Arnold. All right, Mrs. Bronson, this is it. Get ready down there. She's coming down with me. All right, troublemaker. Out. Out. Arnold, come, come in. Look, everybody, look, it's Arnold. Never mind. I haven't seen you in how long? Oh, more than a year. Out! Out! Every day when I lived in the old building, Arnold used to come to throw me out. Others came only once in a while, but not my Arnold. Arnold came every day. He's the one that gave me the lease. Never mind. You have to get out! You have to get out. You have to get out. It's a pleasure to hear you say that again. <laughs> listen, everybody, listen to Arnold. <laughs> oh, no, you're not getting around me this time. Arnold, look, your favorite, honey cake. <laughs> you're a menace to our home urban renewal program. <laughs> urban renewal, who, huh? Fancy name for tearing down a nice old neighborhood and keeping all the families waiting nilly-willy until the project is finished. Don't change the subject. There's going to be no dickering, no deals like last time. This time, it's out, O-U-T. 
Honey cake or strudel? Honey cake. There's gonna be no shilly shally, no pussyfooting. You're a troublemaker, and there's no room in this project for a troublemaker. Such a fine young man. Come on, everybody. I've had it, Bixby. Every night you come back covered with cake crumbs and say, give me more time. I'm making headway, Chief. The only headway I can see is you're getting fat. We can't afford to wait six months to get her out like before. How can a woman live up there all alone without light, water, garbage disposal? Why didn't I think of that before? Get me Chief Health Inspector Willoughby. Uh-huh, uh-huh. No water, no garbage disposal. Don't worry, Commissioner, I know what to do. Now, what was her name? <laughs> Here, eat, boys, eat. Hey, Rachel, these blitzes are terrific. <laughs> just like Monte Carlo. Eat, there's plenty left for the night shift. Look, everybody, it's my old friend Herbert from the health department. <laughs> so, what's new? Mrs. Bronson, pursuant to section 487B Wait of the... Wait a minute, did you hear how he said that? Did you hear how he said the word pursuant? A golden tongue. You know, next to Arnold, he was my favorite one that came to throw me out. So, what's the violation this time? Listen, everybody, how nice he talks. Pursuant to Section 487B of the Health Code, you are hereby ordered to vacate the premises because of one, lack of water. Gunther, another kettle of tea. Coming up, Mrs. B. <laughs> The boys connected it this morning. Two, lack of garbage disposal. Okay, Harry. <laughs> okay, take her away. Harry, you're not staying for lunch. <laughs> uh, yes, Mr. Mayor, it's all settled. She'll be out in 24 hours, and we can start work again. Oh, no, sir. No slip-ups this time. Thank you, sir. Just sign here. This will do it? Yes, sir. Once I file this, I've got her out. Good work. I helped him type it. Shut up. <laughs> How did you do it? I condemned the building. You condemned the building? He condemned the building. I told him it wouldn't work. Shut up. <laughs> At a time when the opposition is yelling about waste in government, you condemn a $60 million project before it is even up? But, Commissioner, I... The city administration's great monument to the future, and you're making it a part of the past. I told you she was a troublemaker. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> I hate to do it this way, but she's forcing my hand. Get me Dr. Michaels, chief resident psychiatrist at Bellevue Hospital. Downstairs. I'll call you if I need you. Mrs. Bronson. Oh, more visitors. Come in, come in. So why are you standing? Francis, make the tea. And come to the, the honey cake. And to whom am I having the pleasures? I'm Dr. Michaels. A doctor? A medical doctor? <laughs> well, in a way, yes. Oh, a dentist. <laughs> Mrs. Bronson, I'm here as a friend. Mrs. Bronson, I, I have come to help you. To help me? Today I don't need any help. Oh, tomorrow you could help me. They're bringing in my living room set. Here's your honey cake. So why are you still standing? Come, sit down. Could I speak to you alone? Well, all right. So come into the guest room. <laughs> You'll excuse the mess. I'm waiting for the painters. 
I called, so they said they're waiting for the walls. <laughs> so? Mrs. Bronson, you're an intelligent woman. Oh, thank you. Mrs. Bronson, you can't live here. Where else should I stay? Downstairs, it's 95 in the shade. It is cool up here. I slept under a blanket last night. Really? I didn't sleep a wink. Sure. You're a doctor. You live downstairs. But up here, uh, close your eyes and you're in the Catskills. <laughs> I haven't tasted honey cake like that since, since my dear wife. You're a widower. I live alone. And you have children. Three. And they never write. How did you know? What's to know? I can see it in your face. If they'd only call, drop in on a holiday. But no, they're engrossed in their own selfish, egotistical life. Pour it out. You almost started, Sally. I gave her the best education, sent her to the best colleges, finishing schools, and how does she thank me? She married a saxophone player. A saxophone player. Under the eye, 21. <laughs> in his haze, under the N, 34. In the Reverend, under the G, 52. Kleine Kindle, under the O, 69. Bingo! Congratulations. Thank you. That's the second commission. <laughs> Shut up. We were just... Uh, come in, come in. Sit down there. There's room for one more. Mrs. Bronson, this is Commissioner Henry. You don't have to tell me. I know. The building commissioner. I saw you on the television last month when you announced that the project would be done on time, August 1. Never mind. Mrs. Bronson, I'm here on business. This is the last warning. Out. So, business is over? Good. Now sit down and play bingo. Go and give him a card. The three for a quarter. The money goes to plant a tree in Israel. I didn't come here to plant a tree. <laughs> Mrs. Bronson, I come here with a message from the mayor himself. Unless you're out in 24 hours, he'll start proceeding. This is the message? Yes. So this is what I want you to tell the mayor. This whole neighborhood that they tore down is the 26th election district in the Bronx. And as they say, the way the 26th goes, so goes the Bronx. So? So, right now, I'm the only registered voter in the whole 26th election district. <laughs> and the way Rachel Bronson goes, so goes the mayor in his next election. <laughs> so you want one card or three for a quarter? I'll take three. <laughs> Come on. It's all right. It's all right. It's only a project. Mrs. Bronson, you've taught me a lesson. Projects should be built on time. But do you realize what you're doing to our schedule? Your schedule? What about my schedule? Your schedule? You're right. I was moving in here August 1st, like it says in the lease. And on August 6th, today, I'm due at my sister Celia's bungalow in the Catskills for my vacation, like every year. You mean you're going away? How can I go away with my apartment looking like this? Wait. <laughs> if we fix up your apartment, will you go away and let us finish the project? You can build all you want. What you do when I'm not here is not my business. Bixby. Get the architect up here right away. The architect? He's in California selecting Redwood for the paneling in the lobby. Tell him to forget about the lobby. Forget everything else. This apartment is going to be finished. Or he's going to be. <laughs> the Tarazza hasn't arrived from Italy yet. The Redwood has the wrong grain. And you drag me back to finish one apartment. Just get it done. <laughs> oh, Commissioner. This is Bronson. This is Mr. Harlow. Oh, this is the famous architect. Good. I was expecting you. Uh, sit down, have some honey cake. Milton, this is Mrs. Bronson. Oh, sit down, Milton. It's Hilton. Hilton Hartford Harlow. Three last names he's got. Hilton Hartford. Sounds like a hotel in Connecticut. Show her the plans. 
This is the basic two-room unit. Here's the foyer, the kitchenette. Ah, uh, excuse me, Milton. It's Hilton. <laughs> Hilton of the Mall. Such a fancy name I'll never remember. But you know something? You remind me of my sister Celia's son, Velvo. So, to save time, do you mind if I call you Velvo? Very much. <laughs> call him anything you want. A commissioner. Shut up, Velvo. <laughs> now, what was it, Mrs. Bronson? I don't see on the plans the radiators. Well, if... <laughs> radiators. The radiant heating is embodied within the structure itself. Radiators? <laughs> there won't be any radiators. There'll be no radiators. So what do I knock on to call up the janitor? <laughs> janitor? You mean the custodial engineer. Call him what you like, as long as he keeps out the roaches. Roaches? <laughs> My dear Mrs. Bronson, you do not know this building. My dear Belleville, you don't know this neighborhood. <laughs> so where, where will be the radiators? No radiators. What? So I'll go and write my sister Celia that I'm not coming for vacation this Stop. year. Stop. She gets radiators. I'm gone. I will gone. Not until after you put in the radiators. <laughs> now go on. You will notice the casement windows with the latest adjustable hinge. That's very nice, but uh, where will be the fire escape? <laughs> fire escape. Mrs. Bronson, the building is fireproof. What has a fire escape got to do with fireproof? A fire escape is for people to sit in the summer and talk to the neighbors. If that's what she wants, that's what she'll get. That's what she wants? That's what she'll get. <laughs> Where are you going? Hey, jump! Let me get it all Come away. back here! <laughs> Think of my reputation. He's such a nervous young man. <laughs> Mrs. Bronson, don't you want anything new? What's wrong with old? Jackie Kennedy, she should live and be well, can keep Lincoln's old furniture and everybody else, hooray. Commissioner, please, quiet. Now, what else, Mrs. Bronson? The rest is very simple. The electric and the gas meters should be on top of the icebox. <laughs> the icebox? My dear Mrs. Bronson, we have refrigerators with the electric meters in the basement. You mean there won't be electric and gas men to come here and check no. the meters? And there won't be a nice man to sit and talk with me for half an hour. No. What are you building for me here, a jail? An apartment is, is for people to visit. But this is progress. You're making so much progress, I could drop dead here and nobody would find me in ten years. I won't do it. I'll jump. Where have you been? They went on an errand for me. We've been stationed all over Manhattan, Brooklyn, Staten Island. We saw every one of the old tenants is going to move in here. Old tenants? What for? So you shouldn't have to go and find out how they want their apartments fixed up. New boys. Well, Mrs. Gagliano wants her apartment just the same as yours, except, well, this wallpaper. <laughs> the, the, the eruption of Mount Vesuvius. No, they find it very restful. Yeah, and this is Mr. Feingold's wallpaper. Uh -huh. And Mr. Feingold wants to know, where is going to be the stoop in front of the building? <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. A built in Hartford Hollow building. <laughs> That's all right, Belleville. It's all right. Gee, Mrs. Bronson, it's beautiful. It's just what you wanted. That Velvel, he's a genius. Oh, I almost forgot. Velvel's on television now. And our final award for his designing and planning of the new Bronxview Village Housing Project. The Institute of Architectural Design takes great pride in presenting its highest award, the gold medal design, to Hilton Hartford. <laughs> in a day when every housing development from coast to coast all look exactly alike, Mr. Harlow has introduced a new concept in modern family living. Here is his prize-winning project. This is the <laughs> inspirational blending of the past and the future that we proudly honor you with our highest award. <laughs> Would you say a few words, Mr. Powell? Auf dem Pripachik brennt das is heiß. Oh, that's Belvilla. He's a genius. 
He listened and he learned. So, um, where were we out? And then they put me into medical school. Be a doctor. Be a doctor. And my mother used to drum into me. Everybody hated me. Tonight's program brought to you by Lava, the soap that gets hands clean right down to the fingernails. And by Improved Tide, adds new freshness to the cleanest wash you can get. up in the Bronx, Brooklyn's broken out in fights. There's a traffic jam in Harlem that's backed up to Jackson Heights. There's a scout troop short a child, cruise ships do an idle wild. Car 54, where are you?